All right, I know I'm not the only guy on the internet to make a Polaris rant, but this is basically a plea to Polaris to change some stuff. Polaris, it is a fact that yes, you make a fantastically riding, fun to ride machine. No dispute. Best ride there is on an ATV. Funnest ones to ride on the trail, in my opinion at least. And I'll probably you see that in sales. Especially in these 450s, the 570s. I think they're the number one selling ATV on the market. But but here's the deal, players. Enough is enough of bending the customer over the table. This four-wheeler here is a 2020 Sportsman 450. 2,000 miles on it. Have a 2020 850 Sportsman, 570, or a 550, um, a, a Ranger, a, a older 700, and I can go back to an older 500 Polaris, the old round body style, okay, and I've worked on them recently. The build quality from those to what you're putting out now is embarrassing, really. It's shameful. I can live with having shitty wheel bearings. And I can live with having crappy bushings, okay? But the things... It, okay, let me back up a little bit. I can live with the, the, the bushings, the bearings, and the other minor crap that constantly fails on these. But there has to be, at some point, where you say, okay, I have a customer base. We have to take care of them a little bit. Essentially, you're making a 2,500-mile machine. At 2,500 miles, the problems start adding up so quick, and the price of the parts and stuff would get so expensive. Maybe, you know, maybe that's your goal. Maybe that's your goal to have them start getting crappy so that they'll trade them in and buy a new machine. But I know there has to be money in parts. So I know you're making money on parts. Where we're at here, 2,000 mile machine, there's no excuse for the steering to have almost an, an inch of play in the steering wheel. I don't know if you guys, it's coming across in the video, but if you can see, it's not. I'm sorry, I don't have a light. There's so much slop where the steering shaft ties into the coupler for the steering. And there's no excuse for it. Okay? It's the same thing on their drive shafts. Anytime Polaris has something where they have a spline shaft, the amount of slop that builds up right after they break in is ridiculous. I mean, it's in the axles. It's in the, the, the drive shafts. But it becomes completely unsafe it's one thing you break an axle or you or you break a, a drive line part okay you're broke down but when the steering when you can't take and put enough care into making the steering components safe it's ridiculous that's a simple simple thing to do i i would gladly when I buy, you're, you've already upped your prices. I understand that inflation and this and that, but you've upped your prices. It's not like these machines are cheap. For what it would take to improve a few items on here, I would gladly pay $758,000 more for a machine. This coupler for the steering, one, 
have a hardened shaft that comes out of the power steering box. And if that is hardened, I don't know. Doesn't seem like it to me. But I know for certain that the coupler that attaches to that is a very soft metal. And they wear out really fast. You get a ton of play. And I've even seen them skip inside of the coupler. Okay? Why can't you make the coupler a little bit stronger and design it with two pinch bolts, one on each side, so that it holds tight and you don't get slop and play in your steering? I know that your, your focus and everything is on the razors, but there are still a ton of people shelling out good money to buy these ATVs. And they were your bread and butter. They were your only thing that and uh, snowmobiles for, for years and years. So why do you just absolutely screw people with this kind of stuff? And going back to the build quality I was just referencing on the older 500s. Yeah, I just had one I was doing some routine maintenance on. Machine's old as dirt. It's still in great condition. Right here. Let me see if I can turn. Uh, I can't turn on a light. But where your connection comes here now. For your shifter to your transmission. It's just a little plastic clip. You know what they used back on the 500s? A metal rod in. Looked just like a... Um, um, a tie rod on the front of these machines. A metal screw on to the shaft. Comes through with a bolt. You have a nut. Good and secure. We've broken these many times. I mean, how much more does that cost? You engineered, you, you spent money engineering backwards. When you had a good system that held up. The old machines hold up. These do not. And it's not right. We ride, my family has several ATVs, side-by-sides and things like that. And these Polaris's are constantly, constantly needing work. It, the K, we have KRX 1000s, nothing. We do nothing. Change the oil and put some filters on it. You do nothing. These, the brakes wear out fast. The wheel bearings... Or you might as well just change them uh, with every other oil change, realistically. Uh, steering components fail. The play back and forth up here in, I can't, when you hold the handlebars, this has slopped back and forth because it's just the chintziest plastic bushing right here. The old 500s weren't like that. You engineered backwards, you know, to give less of a product that you sell for more money and it's just it's getting pathetic and i do know this unless build quality changes and i don't see you doing that the next round of atvs that we purchase will not have a polaris logo on the side of them um yes we will sacrifice the ride quality for a more dependable machine. The Yamaha Grizzly, does it have the power my 850 has? No. Does it ride as plush as these do? No. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't disappoint. It is what it is. They don't have overly cheap components. They last. You just run them and run them and run them. This thing here, there are no better maintained ATVs than the ones in our fleet. I, I stay on top of these constantly. Oil changes at 50 hours. I do the differentials and transmission every other oil change. I'm changing wheel bearings every time I turn around. We grease them constantly. Bushings have no bush, no life in them whatsoever, and I'll show you why. I keep, I just keep them as spares here because they constantly. Let me get this ripped open. Oh. 
because they constantly fail. This here is their new HD, okay? It's got this lip here. It's supposed to seal out dirt. It does nothing. The other manufacturers, Kawasaki, okay, you know what they do? They have a UHMW bushing that has an O-ring just inside of here. I just took, uh, my niece wrecked the KRX, hit a tree, bent the A-arm, okay? Machine has 2,000 miles on it. I pulled the bushing, the, the A-arm apart. The bushings and the, the, the steel sleeve that goes inside... The bushing and the steel sleeve that goes inside had no wear. Complete everything inside. Completely clean. They use like a, a clear looking grease. Completely clean. No dirt. All of these bushings in this machine were replaced over the winter. Okay? These back bushings at the bottom, right here, down here at the bottom... I had the other wheel off on the dryer or on the right side to put the uh, a, a new wheel bearing in. They're shot, absolutely shot, full of dirt. We don't mud, we trail ride. It's shameful what you're doing to customers. I I just I made a video a little while back raving about my 850, how much I liked it, but now it's just constantly nickel and diming me. And it, it, it's it's just not right. Players, I really think you need to get your act together and start get, caring about your customers. Because right now there's a big boom in the ATV and side-by-side -side market, right? Where you can't build them fast enough because of the COVID thing. That's going to turn around here, okay? And then you're going to go back to core customers. And when the core customers aren't buying the product a second time, then what? When they start moving on to the other brands, then what? It, it's shameful. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of feeling like I'm getting screwed. I mean, we have old Hondas. Granted, an old Honda, nowhere near as fast as this machine or the 850. Don't ride as nice. But for God's sake, we have an old 300 4 by 4 Nothing, nothing has ever been done to it except oil changes. That is it. Not even brakes. Absolutely nothing has ever been done to it. And it's been used year in and year out. Year in and year out. These, every single trip... Every single trip when we get back, there's a laundry list. And some of it I'm willing to accept because I understand that with a softer riding suspension, you can ride over the rocks and the stuff faster, so stuff works more, okay? But when I can see that Kawasaki has solved the issue with the bushings and they're not wearing out every time you turn around, why can't you? In other machines, Yamaha, Mule, um, Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, when their steering isn't sloppy and junk after, uh, I mean, it's got 200 hours on it. 200 hours. So you're making, you know, a 300-hour machine. Because I don't even want to know where, how much more money it's going to take to keep this going at three at another 100 hours. It's shameful. If you want me to come back, I need to see some improvements, a longer warranty, start standing behind some products. I just bought your HD wheel bearing today for $81. No warranty whatsoever on, on an $81 bearing. Granted, it is, it's sealed and it's twice the weight of the factory bushing. Twice. Why couldn't you put them in from the factory to begin with? Why couldn't you take care of your customers and put in a better product from the beginning? Shameful.